It is election season. It's in full swing uh, around here, as you know. We've been focusing uh, before in the past couple of weeks on the District 19 race. Uh, but there's another race out there that uh, is expected to uh, be just as interesting, and uh, that is the race for mayor here in Lubbock, Texas. And uh, joining me in studio is uh, Dan Pope. Dan, welcome to the show. How are you? I'm great, Chad. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. Well, uh, glad to have you in uh, in studio uh, of course, people uh, know you for being the president of the uh, Lubbock ISD uh, Board of Trustees. Uh, and, and, but, but tell people a little bit more about yourself and uh, why you decided to run for mayor. Well, that's great. Um, I'm, a, I'm a Lubbock businessman. I'm married for 23 years to Denise. I have two college-age children. I'm an eighth-generation Texan. I came to Texas Tech uh, in, in the early 80s and spent a few years here, graduated here, and um, Spent 10 years in the corporate world with Xerox before coming back here in 94 to open our own business. Um, I, uh, our business, uh, we, we, we had an opportunity to build a business over 20 years where we grew from one employee to seven, more than 70 employees. So I've been down that road. I've had a chance to do a number of things in the community from, and the church from a voluntary standpoint. In the last nine years, I've served on the School board, as you mentioned. So right. I guess that's a net, probably more more than you want to know, but uh, a little bit of a bio. Well, why did you decide now is the time to run for mayor? Well, I mean, I'd be uh, less than honest if I said that an open seat is not uh, <laughs> of, of interest. I and mean, that's that's uh, compelling. I, I, my term ends on the school board in, in, uh, in May. My kids are both out of our schools. I think it's a good time to go. I'm not a big believer that someone needs to stay forever. I, I, I also feel like... Uh, it's a great time for the city. I think I have the leadership skills and, and uh, um, experience to help move the city forward. It's a good time personally for us. Uh, I don't have an ax to grind. I don't really have a, an agenda as such other than I feel like um, strong, accountable leadership at City Hall is important uh, as we try to go uh, you know, to, to – Lubbock's a great place. I, you know, I um, – too many times people apologize for Lubbock, and I'm not an apologist. This is a great community. It's uh, it's where we chose 20 years ago to come, 21 years ago to come and build a business and raise our family. And in some ways, it's a way to give back. So that's that's why I'm, that's why I threw my hat in there. That's great. Uh, when when looking at the position of mayor, uh, it is a position where there's a lot of work involved. Obviously, a lot of time involved, and uh, it's one where you are constantly. Uh, getting criticized, you know, whether it be from other council members, which uh, you've already had a taste of that, uh, and, and, and from the media as, as well. Uh, do you think that if you're elected mayor, would you like to see some of that? Is, is, is there something you could do to maybe stop some of the fighting uh, on the city council? We've heard that from other people who have run for mayor before about trying to bring the council together and to calm people down on the council. Is that something that you would like to aim for, and is it doable? Well, first, I th- it would be something that I would try to do. Um, if, if it's doable, I, I, I believe it's doable, but only time would tell. I, I think the the mayor's job is to bring everybody together and, and to, to try to um, make sure that all op- opinions are voiced, that all issues get on the table, that the decisions that are made benefit the greater good that we, we don't make decisions for special interest or, or uh, certain parts of town. I'm a, I'm, I'm a believer that uh, you can uh, disagree and not be particularly disagreeable. Um, I don't have a problem. If we have a difference of opinion, that's not going to put you in some kind of hate category. It, it's just uh, I believe that uh, you need to understand how I feel. I need to understand how you feel. So, sure, that would be a goal. Now, to to suggest that it's going to, you know, be uh, like, you know, utopia, I, I'm not I'm not going to sit here and talk about that, Chad. I think that's uh, um, uh, that would be sort of silly for me to make that that comment. What uh, for those who may not know, what is your political philosophy? I, you know, it is an office where you're not necessarily tied to an an R or a D next to your name, but there are some uh, members on the council who they go ahead and come out and say, hey, here here's where I'm at. What, what is your political philosophy? Well, I'm, I'm a conservative Republican. Uh, I'm a, a fiscal conservative. Uh, I'm a uh, believer that uh, uh, government is not the solution. In fact, some, uh, often government's the problem. Um, so small, small government kind of guy. I'm a b- big believer in the private sector. I think that that's what 
um, that's what we need to you know empower. I'm a big believer in, in the the value of education, regardless of where it's gained. I think it's something that we it's the 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 uh, foundation of our democracy. So that that would that would describe I think my my beliefs. What do you think you can take from the the position of LISD Board of Trustees and take to City Hall? Well, there's a number of things that I think are very portable. I mean, the fir- first of all, going through the, the 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 budget process and the going through nine of those. It, certainly, the city budget's different. Um, in some ways, a little more complex than what we deal with at LSD. But the LSD budget's a, it's a 210 million dollar budget. It's significant in, in that regard. So I, I think you you learn from that how to make hard decisions. You know, we've closed 10 schools in the last since I've been on the school board. We we um, those are hard decisions to make, but uh, consolidated or closed 10, that's to, to say we've closed 10 is maybe the wrong way to say it. Uh, we met in a, uh, we found ourselves five years ago with an $11 million deficit due to some, as you recall, due to some changes in state funding. We had to eliminate 90 positions. Um, we eliminated 90 positions, uh, all administrative positions. Uh, that those are difficult kind of decisions to make. You, uh, so so those kind of experiences are are important. I also also think I understand the governance model. Mm-hmm. Uh, as 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 a school board president, it's not my job to uh, to go to Roscoe Wilson and and make sure that they're doing what they need to be doing. My job's to approve budget, or our job's to approve budget, to approve policy, to approve, approve strategic direction to hire the superintendent to evaluate the superintendent so some of that certainly transfers to city hall with a strong city manager form of government um, that's uh, that's in many ways the mayor and council's role now right. it, it requires more it requires more time at, at city hall and I, i'm willing to and able to do that but i think i think those are the things i've learned we'll go ahead and we'll take the break when we come back we'll continue our conversation with dan pope there are a lot of issues facing the city of lubbock and uh, we'll go, go into just some of those uh, when we come back here on the Chad Hasty Show, KFYO. All right, Chad Hasty Show, News Talk 790 KFYO. In studio with me is uh, Dan Pope, who is running for mayor, announced last week that uh, he is running for mayor of Lubbock, Texas. And, uh, Dan, thanks again for uh, joining us today on the show. Uh, a, a lot of issues are facing uh, Lubbock, Texas, and, and the city of Lubbock. And, and we'll start off with... Uh, what seems to get everybody upset all the time, which is LPNL. Uh, tell us your direction as far as what you'd like to see from LPNL uh, going forward. Obviously, 2019 power generation, they're looking at joining ERCOT. Do you think that's a good idea? Talk to us a little bit about LPNL and what your direction would be. Well, I think LPNL is one of the, those top two or three issues, certainly. Um, I, I, uh, I'm going to take a bit of a pass on this because I don't know a, the complete ERCOT solution. I think that's one of the challenges. I think most citizens don't understand all of it. I, right. I do like the, uh, I, I like the direction we've went. I, I'm not a supporter of a billion dollars worth of uh, debt for a, for a, you know, in a, a place, a generation, generation facility. Um, I, I, uh, I, I do, I do think that this is a, a critical decision for us. You know, when I think ERCOT, Chad, I think about um, d- deregulation. So mm-hmm. that's something I think I need. I know, and I think maybe there's a moratorium on that in the in the agreement. Um, I also think about more expensive power. One of the things that I think most Lubbockites don't realize is how cheap our power is. Now that bill comes with a lot of other things in it, sure. and and you guys talk a lot about that. But when you get look at what we pay for electricity. If you take cities over 100,000, I believe we're, we're maybe the second lowest in the state. Right. Um, it, it's a remarkable value. So I think one of my questions, one of my roles as mayor would be to ensure that we continue to deliver that power in the most cost-effective and reliable fashion. Because I think our businesses, um, um, they, they all count on that. Certainly our citizens do too, but but our homes and businesses count on that. So uh I have some meetings uh, in the process of scheduling meetings. I'm pleased, by the way, with LPNL, with the new leadership down there. I think it settled things down. I, I don't know David well, I, but I know I know Andy Bertram from his past. Have worked with him. Have a lot of confidence in his ability. I think Greg Taylor is a has done a wonderful job as the board chair. I think the board's done done a great job. So I look forward to learning a bit more about it. Next time I come back, I'll know a little more about it. You're a business owner, so uh, you've probably heard stormwater and stormwater rates. Uh, 
where do you think we're heading in that direction? What needs to be done? I know there's possible law, you know, there is a lawsuit uh, out there right now, but that this something something you mentioned even during your your campaign announcement. Right. So I think the stormwater um, one is a, is an interesting one. The council has put, my understanding, has put in a place, put in a fix in place, but we're still about eleven months out before ten and a half months out before we'll see that. I need to understand that better. Although it's at face value, it appears to be a much better solution than where we are today. Right. This is a hot topic wherever I go. Um, this is something I talk about. Uh, or that I hear about business owners, builders, developers, homeowners. This is a, 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 a key topic. And one of the things I think that concerns me about this one is, you know, we've kicked this around for a long time, Chad. We've mm-hmm. had several different citizens groups that have looked at it. Um, to some degree, we're going to have to pay the piper. We just need to do it in the, in the I think, in the most equitable, equitable way we can do it. But I think we also need to remind folks that we're not finished with this stormwater um, solution yet. This, the, the older part of our town, sort of central Lubbock, uh, the, the medical district, um, uh, Tech Terrace where I live, heart of Lubbock. I mean, those parts of town, we've not fixed. The, you know, There's another phase of this that at some point – um, it, it's on the uh, the plan to to deal with. So it's a pretty. It's not just those rates. It's how do we uh, uh, sort of finish the race? I guess you'd say. Uh, dealing with the issues of taxes, uh, you had a council who just raised taxes. Uh, you had three members of the council, including the current mayor, uh, Councilman Jeff Griffith, and Councilwoman Karen Gibson, who proposed a plan that would say, "No, we don't need to raise taxes uh, this year. We could wait uh, in order to do that." Uh, this question you're going to get a lot uh, about tax increases because people are tired of seeing their bills go up. How would you address that issue? Well, I'm not a fan of tax increases, first of all. I, I think the plan that they that they offered uh, had a lot of merit to it. Um, but I, I do think we've got to have this discussion about taxes and maybe as important our debt. Right. Uh, to me, and I talked a little bit about this last Thursday when I, when I announced, but to me, the uh, – uh, we we really have to have more of a discussion with the citizens about debt and these projects that, that uh, uh, go along with that. For instance, um, we're building a new fire station downtown. Mm-hmm. I believe that if we, we put that to the voters, the voters would have approved that. However, it's been our practice for the last number of years, and this is this is not just this council. This goes back several, but it's been our practice to issue COs for that for that debt uh, versus the, the 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 GOs or the 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 bonds that would go that you would issue um, after a bond election. I think if if you could articulate a plan that developed by citizens uh, for a period of time and and then talk about how you would pay for it, short as shortest period as possible uh, on that. Uh, then I then I think you get a good feel for what people want. Um, mm-hmm. I think we have to deal with you know right in front of us. You know if we talk about taxes, is is uh, the police department and city hall and and how we pay for that. Right. The last citizens group that the last bond c- uh, committee that, that worked many many hours got lots of citizen input suggested that we need a, a new fire station and a new police station and. We've gone a little different route on that, but those are discussions we have to to, to have because if we're going to fund um, uh, those items, those are going to require dollars to do that, uh, and uh, that's a discussion that it's it's at the council level. But we've got to get a lot of input from all parts of town before we can make those decisions. Uh, another big issue that faced uh, the council uh, this past year and will possibly face the council in the future: uh, smoking ban. Uh, private I'm, property yeah, rights. What, not, what are your thoughts? I'm, I'm not. A, I'm not a fan of expanding the smoking ban. I think that's to me that's way down the list. I think one of the things we haven't talked about that's critical and the next council will deal with is hiring a new city manager. I, I believe that's a big, big piece of what we're trying to accomplish because city city hall needs to be more responsive. City hall needs to be more accessible, and, and good leadership will help with that. And that that's a that's a big one that the next council has to deal with. I've got some experience having. Um, helped do those or make those kind of decisions in the past. Um, and I, I think uh, 
I want to, I want to focus my time on that. It's uh, the smoking deal to well, me. Well, but it's going to come back. It, it will come back. It, to it, me, it's, how it's, would you it's a non-starter. No, I'm not. In, I'm not in favor of that. Okay. I, I don't know that. I'm not. I don't know exactly how it came up before. But to me, let's. It's about doing. Let's prioritize first things first. And I don't want to get down into. That's back to the point about government. You know, what what role does government have? Um, I think the policy we've got in place today. Uh, works very well for our, for our city. I was here when we put it in place sure. and we worked through it, and I think it was a, a, a fair policy. You know, as we go down the road, certainly things th- certainly things change, but where we are today, that's not something I could support. Uh, let's see, current uh, police station and uh, plans for City Hall moving over to Citizens Tower. Where are you on that? We need a new police station. I mean, I, I know that well. That police station is a uh, is, uh, is abysmal. It's not safe. Um, so I'm a big supporter of that. Um, I, I, I'm don't have not seen the plans, but it, 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 the question I would have about moving the police station to city hall is, do we really want to spend that kind of money to move the police into what will be about a 75 year old building by the time we move them there? 70 year old building. Um, that to me is, is we really have to think through that. Uh, I I don't know enough about the uh, the decision to move to the Omni building. If we can do it for what they've said we can do it dollars wise, then maybe it, it, it's something we should look at. But I need to know a lot more about it. And I think a lot of citizens need to know a lot more about that, Chad. Yeah, you, you seem to be uh, a little iffy on the Citizens Tower. Is this one where, you know, as a as a business owner, you look at it and say, yeah, you've I've seen quotes before uh, come in, and sometimes those don't always pan out. Well, I think my experience of building as a, as a business owner um but maybe even more importantly we you know we've uh we just we're finishing a 400 uh, excuse me we're sp- finishing a 199 million dollar bond package at lsd which we did as we said we would without raising taxes but you learn that sometimes you expect something to cost x when you're doing your planning and it may cost x plus 20 percent well x plus 20 percent on citizens tower is a lot of millions of dollars and i think that's what those are the kind of questions i would have what uh, when it comes to downtown redevelopment, uh, the plan that we're on uh, right now, is, is there any more uh, money from you know, taxpayers that need to go into it? How would you tackle downtown redevelopment? Downtown need, redevelopment's critical. Downtown redevelopment needs to be a private effort. I mean, I, I'll uh, point to Buddy Holly Hall. They've raised over $80 million, all right. private dollars. That's the way we need to go. The gov- city needs to get out of the way, help as they can to move barriers out of the way, maybe take elect- the, you know, the electric lines underground and some of the more infrastructure type oh, things. Sure. But let's turn the private sector loose. Uh, let's see, in about 30 seconds, tell people what they need to know about you. I'll spend the next uh, 90, 120 days uh, meeting people, doing a lot of listening, trying to understand the issues better, educating myself, but also understanding what's on everybody's mind. Um, you'll see our campaign be uh, um, very open uh, across the community and you, probably not a lot of, of active campaigning till after Super Tuesday. All right, great. Dan Pope, good to see you. Thanks a lot, Chad.